Welcome to this lesson about the Advantage Actor Critic algorithm. As you will see, the A to C uh, or Advantage Actor Critic algorithm is a crucial move from the policy gradient methods to actor critic methods. As I will explain here, this is the earliest actor critic algorithm which is using stochastic policy from the deep reinforcement learning era. In practice, the first two algorithms using deep neural network were TRPO, which uses stochastic policies but is not actor critic, and DDPG, which is actor critic but which is using deterministic policy. This is why A to C is this crucial move um, from policy gradient to actor critic because it uses stochastic policies using the standard policy gradient approach and then it adds some actor critic mechanism. More precisely, it directly derives from the policy gradient method, but the critic is learned using bootstrap, which makes it an actor critic algorithm. And let me say that this paper, where A to C is defined, focuses more on an asynchronous version, which is called A3C. And in this asynchronous version, you have several agents which generate data. And since this is asynchronous, the corresponding data is more independently and identically distributed, so you don't need to use a rate play buffer in A3C. So A2C could be seen as a simplified version of A3C with a single agent, but it still does not use a replay buffer. Let's see the main distinguishing features of this algorithm. As you know, to perform policy gradient, you need some advantage function. And the way A to C computes the advantage function is the following. It uses a value function, not a action value function, so a V function and not a Q of SA function. But it uses this value function minus the return of the current trajectory, but just taking the N next steps. You will see also that it adds some entropy regularization to favor exploration, which is very early in this domain. No using entropy regularization has become much more common in uh, reinforcement learning, but this was one of the earliest to do so. It also uses n-step updates. As I already said, it does not use a replay buffer. And what is interesting in the context of this general class about the shift between uh, policy gradient and actor critic is that A to C is actor critic, but it's on policy. So one cannot equate being actor critic and being of policy. One point is that it would be straightforward to add a replay buffer to A to C and to make it more of policy. But this is not the way the algorithm is designed. So first, as I just said, it uses a value function. So why is this interesting? In fact, when you want to have a critic in an actor critic algorithm, you have to choose between the V function and the Q function. And one point is that if you are using the Q function, if you are using discrete actions, you have to design your, net your network this way. Okay, You put the state as input and you will have one Q value for each action in the output. Whereas if you are using continuous action, you have to put the state and the actions in the input layer and then you will have a single neuron which will give you the Q value of performing that action in that state. So it means that the critique is different whether you are using discrete actions or, or continuous actions. If you are using a value function then you are independent of uh, what are the actions, are they uh, discrete or continuous. So it's more general. So by using V, uh, v of S uh, a to C can be applied both to discrete and continuous section, which is a nice property for a reinforcement learning algorithm. Another point is that one could think that learning this network is a little easier than learning one of these because it is a little bit smaller. In that case, you have fewer outputs, and in that case, you have fewer inputs. Okay. So this V network is smaller, but it's not necessarily easier to estimate because in the V function, you have an implicit max over the actions. Okay, You have V of S is the max over the actions of the Q values of SA. Okay. 
And to learn this network, this is very simple. In fact, you have to compute a temporal difference error. I call it delta, and it's this way. Okay, if you have a value function, then you don't need any action here, so it's quite straightforward. Okay, and then you just apply the standard update rule, rule where the value at the next iteration is the value of the, at the previous iteration plus alpha, which is your learning rate, times the delta you have just computed. So it's rather easy to implement critic learning in A2C. Now what about computing the advantage function? So as I said, to uh, compute, to perform a policy gradient update, you need to compute this advantage function. The definition of this function is that, is that it is the Q function of doing that action in the state minus the value function, okay? So it's a regret uh, which tells you uh, what you lose from using that particular action by contrast with using the best possible action. And if you read to the paper, A to C computes the advantage not in this way, but using that particular formula. In this formula, RT corresponds to the return of the current n steps trajectory over the state ST. So you just accumulate small rewards from the state, from the current state to the nth one. And then you take gamma to the power of n, the value function corresponding to the next state that you will reach after the n step. Okay. And this a uh, reward can be seen as an approximate value for the Q function because the Q function of doing action AT in state ST corresponds to performing several trajectories from that particular state. Now we know how to compute the advantage function, so you, you, we can perform standard policy gradient update using this formula. But A to C does something else. It adds an entropy term to the gradient calculation. So finally, the policy update rule is the following. Okay, you have this advantage function which is written this way, minus beta, which is uh, entropy coefficient, times some entropy. Okay, and the entropy uh, is computed at the current state based on the different actions that the policy will propose at that particular state. And uh, okay, you will have to look at the code to see how to compute this very easily using standard uh, PyTorch methods. And one point which is interesting is that A to C and soft actor critique both use an entropy term, but not in the same way. The idea is that A to C adds an entropy in the update of the actor, but outside the critique, whereas soft actor critique also adds the entropy term in the critique target, which has a deeper impact on the algorithm. Here is the reference of the soft actor critique paper if you need to have a look inside. Finally, I told you that A to C is using n-step update. So how does it work? The idea is that the agent will perform n steps in the environment. Then will, it will perform the updates based on these n steps and then perform the next n steps and so on and so on. And how does it perform an update based on these n steps? It will first update the value and the, poli and the policy gradient based on the last step that it performed and then on the previous, uh, the last and the previous and then the last, the previous, etc. up to the first. One point is that if your problem is episodic, it might be the case that you don't have n steps but because you have just stopped before and in that particular case, you will start from the last that you have even if this, that's not, there is no n here. And that's it for the A to C algorithm. And uh, soon I will post a video about how to code this algorithm because it's quite straightforward. And you will see that in using PyTorch, it's only a few lines of code. Thank you for listening.